What's up guys? So back in May, I asked Samsung for a review sample of their 1TB T3 external SSD. A few weeks later, the drive showed up at my doorstep, but was immediately placed on the back burner while my attention shifted to the RX 480 and GTX 1060 launches. Now, even though I'm just getting around to posting my review of the T3, I've actually been using it daily since the day it arrived. Needless to say, my other drives have been extra jelly, especially this one that fell into a jar of jelly. Like its critically acclaimed predecessor, the T1, this revamped pocket SSD works with Windows, Mac, and Android devices, and comes in variants of 250GB, 500GB, 1TB, and 2TB capacities. At $370 USD, the 1TB model currently goes for $0.425 a gig. Right now, the 1TB 850 EVO goes for just $0.314 a gig, which is twice the rate most DJs should be making per gig. But if you're looking for a speedy external storage solution, the T3 packs in some nice features that an internal SSD being used as an external device simply does not have. For starters, with a weight of 51 grams and dimensions of just 78 by 58 by 10 and a half millimeters, the T3 is super compact and makes other SSD enclosures seem bulky in comparison. For being so small, the drive feels surprisingly durable with its two-tone metal casing and internal frame that's shock resistant up to 1500 Gs. Not those Gs. Apart from a blue activity light, the only thing you'll find around the enclosure is a Type-C connector supporting USB 3.1 Gen 1. Unlike Gen 2, which is rated for 10 gigabits per second speeds, USB 3.1 Gen 1 is a slight iteration of USB 3.0 and retains its theoretical transfer rate of 5 gigabits per second. What's that, Jimmy? That's a USB 3.1 drive you've got. Right. Next you'll probably tell me that's a hoverboard you're on. It would have been nice to have actual Gen 2 10 gigabits per second support here, but I suppose I'll wait to run the benchmarks before making a big fuss. The included Type-C to Type-A cable measures 18 inches, or 45 centimeters long, which leaves enough slack for plugging in behind your desktop, but stays short enough to wrap quickly with the included Velcro strap. As many of you know, one of the great triumphs of Type-C connectors is that they're reversible, so there's never a need to double check the orientation of your cable or connector before plugging in. Finding the hole is the only goal. To ensure that any sensitive files that you may have stored on the drive remain private, the T3 can also be password protected using AES 256-bit encryption. On the box, Samsung claims a sequential read and write transfer speed of 450 megabytes per second, which puts it in the same league as modern SATA-based SSDs. I quickly verified these numbers using Atto Diskmark and found a sequential read and write of 463 and 444 megabytes per second respectively, showing speeds closer to or greater than the advertised specs. Like any good politician, theoretical numbers numbers only tell us half the story. So to gauge real-world performance, I first ran some transfer speed tests with the drive plugged into the USB 3.1 port of my Asus X99 Sabertooth in Hotline. Here it's important to note that the T3 also supports UASP, a USB protocol that boosts data throughput, so I made sure to enable this option in AI Suite 3 throughout our testing. Now to give us a frame of reference for how well the T3 performs, we needed some competition, so I rounded up two other common types of external drive solutions. Weighing in, we have a fairly basic 32 gig Kingston data a Traveler USB 3.0 flash drive, and a 512 gig ADATA SX900 2.5 inch SATA 3 SSD that I've mounted inside this HyperX external USB 3.0 enclosure. A scandalous affair that would likely disappoint both their parents. To see how these drives stack up, let's have a look at our first write speed test, which was a 10 gigabyte folder containing all the game files for Metro Last Light. As we can see, the T3 and SX900 finished the transfer in the exact same time of 61 seconds, while the thumb drive takes twice as long. Next, I tried a larger game folder with Hitman Absolution and saw the ADATA SSD edge out the T3 by 13 seconds, making it around 6% faster. Again, our poor flash drive gets crushed by the SSDs, taking 162% longer to write the files. Our next test involved writing a large batch of pictures taken with my Samsung Galaxy S6. Most of them are shots of me eating watermelon while staring at a kilowatt. Again, the USB 3 drive falls way behind both SSDs, and the SX900 manages to shave 9 seconds off of the T3's time. Although just when it seems the T3 is always one step behind, things get interesting once we try writing different types of incompressible data. When moving a single 4GB video file, we see the table suddenly turn in Samsung's favor by nearly cutting the SX900's time in half, and performing 3 times faster than the data traveler. To verify these results in a more extreme scenario, I proceeded to write 88 gigs of incompressible video files to the two SSDs. The results were consistent as we saw the T3 take 34% less time than the SX900, which saved us about two and a half minutes. Precious time that was used to make love to my wife. Quality over quantity, my friends. From the numbers we're seeing, it appears the Pocket SSD shines brightest when handling incompressible data, which just so happens to be what's often used in video editing. So to put the drive through its paces, I fired up Adobe Premiere Pro and tried working with some 4K footage straight off of the T3. 
Surprisingly, everything from previewing clips to scrubbing through the timeline proved to be very fluid. Regular playback and shuttling through the footage at full quality proved an effortless task with no stuttering or dropped frames. Seeing this for myself, I couldn't help but ask why couldn't all my trips to the bathroom go this smoothly. At any rate, the ability to use the drive as an editing disk via USB instantly gives the T3 more purpose than simply moving files from A to B, making it an incredibly useful device when editing on the go. Now in most cases, a terabyte of storage is plenty for video editing, but it's also ample room for storing your games library. Of course, you'll only make the most of this if the drive itself is fast enough to let you run those games off of it. So for our final test, I installed Origin and Crisis 3 on the T3 to see what kind of gaming experience we could expect. Because frankly, the client experience sucks no matter which drive it's on. Gaming on my X99 testbed with max settings at Quad HD, load times were snappy, and my entire playthrough was smooth to the point where the game might as well have been running off of my PC's internal SSD. The drive did get moderately warm, but you'll probably need a 950 Pro if you want to fry some eggs. Running games via a USB connection could make a lot of sense for laptop users who don't have enough internal storage, or if you just want to hijack every PC you come across to see if it can run Crisis. After using the T3 for the past month or two, I found that it has a lot to offer in nearly every aspect of an external drive. Speed, portability, build quality, and security. If I have to leave one category out here, it's affordability since the T3 does come at a notably higher dollar per gig than most SATA-based SSDs. With that premium, however, comes a truly compact design, the Type-C convenience factor, and rapid speeds that give way to versatility and time saving. If your computer supports USB 3.1 and you're in the market for a new external drive, don't let the price alone keep you from picking one of these up. It's honestly the best external drive I've used since I can remember, and I think it's worth every penny. But let me know what you guys think of this thing in the comments, and don't forget to toss me a like on this video.